Merry Christmas Eve, fellow Plexers. I thought I'd post a quick video on how to get some Christmas pre-rolls going. This will not be a video on how to acquire Christmas pre-rolls, but there's, there's plenty available and it's easy to grab them without too much research. So this is one of the ones I'm going to be adding to a test server of mine that I just spun up. And I'll share a link for this. This is the support article that talks about how to do it. And you can play a single pre-roll, you can play multiple pre-rolls, or you can play a random pre-roll before a movie. Unfortunately, this does not work before TV show episodes, but I think it does work with other videos and in another video library also. So I'll share a link to this, and it really gives the example example a comma separating your your pre-rolls will play them sequentially a semicolon plays a random one and that's what we'll be concentrating on today so good media structure is always very helpful and I'm going to cover the hardest part of pre-rolls especially for someone using network storage of how to get that listed properly so what I always suggest is like a nested structure so this is the media share I'm using on my older Synology NAS. And, and I've got a test install of Plex in a Docker container. And this is all public domain media except for the pre-rolls. So I like to use a sort folder for library types. One for movie, one for music, one for TV shows. Inside the sort folder are my individual folders for each movie library a documentary movie library, a kids, a movie, and that's where I threw in a pre-roll folder. So if you really like pre-rolls, you still want a nested approach because you could have a Christmas folder, a New Year's folder, a 4th of July, a Halloween, Easter, whatever you wanted. I do Christmas for the month of December and then um, New Year's Eve I switch to a couple random New Year's ones and I let that play through like January 3rd and then I'm done with pre-rolls until Halloween and I throw some random Halloween ones up. So inside this would be the actual library folder. I have three examples. So that's all pretty easy unless you're on network storage. So the first thing you want to do is add a library to that. You don't have to share it with anybody but it will help you out determining your path. So I'm going to add a library. I am going to call it just an other video library. It doesn't matter whether it's movie or not. Click Next. Browse for my folders. And, and this is the, the basically the alias I used in the Docker container. And I will choose Movie Libraries, go into the pre-roll sort, into the Christmas, and just click Add. And the advanced settings doesn't matter here, so I'm just going to do that. And why that matters is it easily gets the path. So let me find a text editor. And this was some from some previous video that I don't need anymore. Okay, so I've got a scratch pad going. I'm going to click into the library and I'm just going to go to the edit info and this is all I need. This is my path. Now if you're using a JBOD setup it's very easy to know what your path is. Um, it's not so easy for somebody figuring this out if they're using network storage. So then I'm going to put the semicolon and I'm going to go to the next video, grab the info, Highlight it, copy it, paste it into the text document, throw another semicolon in here. I don't know why my mouse didn't show up. Go to the last pre roll, grab the info again, copy it. paste it in 
and now I have this. I can save this to use for next Christmas time in a text document right in the same folder if I want. So now I'm just going to highlight all of it, copy it, come back to my server, go to settings, and I'll go to extras, and right here I'll now paste in everything. And I'll save changes. And now I can go to my movie library. Well, I gotta connect to the right server. My test server. And these are all public domain movies so I can show one, but just to be safe, I'll do Big Buck Bunny. And the movie starts playing. So if you enter it again, you should get a different pre-roll. But because it's random, it could be the same one. So let's try it again. And again, we'll try it. Let's see how many times you get the third and final one. Okay, so quick and easy, and I only have one warning for you, which I discovered um, playing with pre-rolls for the first time a few years ago. Be very careful when you grab a pre-roll that you're not grabbing a 4K pre-roll if you're sharing 1080p and lower media with friends and family. I had a user who had a inexpensive non-4K Fire Stick and when I enabled my holiday pre-rolls, I didn't realize that some of them were 4K, not all. So this friend of mine got stuck and he was afraid to call me. His TV shows would play fine off my server, but some movies wouldn't start and it all had to do with the, the few 4K pre-rolls. If one of those 4K pre-rolls randomly was chosen to play before the 1080p movie, his fire stick just couldn't handle it and it blocked the movie from playing too. And it took me a hot minute to discover that. So you want to make sure that the bitrate isn't too high. Like, like if the average bitrate of your movies is 10 or something or 3 or 15, whatever it is, you really don't want to start adding 60 megabit per second bitrated pre-rolls. So you might want to run things through handbrake like you might do with your movies to have things match up. Um, especially if you don't have gig access like I do to the internet. Um, if, you're, if you're stuck with 15 megabits per second uploads and to avoid transcoding you've got your media set at a lower bit rate so you can have two or three users connecting all at the same time, a high bit rated pre-roll can kind of screw things up too. So just be aware of that like you would be any media. Besides that, Merry Christmas Eve and Happy Plexing, and I'll see you all in the new year.